Hello everyone, it's Monday morning and I'm back with um, two techniques to show you today. I'm going to uh, show you two different types of cards to make. One of them is a clean and simple, really fast, and the other one is a lot more difficult assemblage card. This card um, was designed by Tammy Tutero and you can find it on her uh, website www.tammytutero.com and I will uh, add this in the uh, description underneath the video so that you'll know exactly how to spell it. So, but I want to give Tammy credit for this card. It's a beautiful card. And it's fun to make. Uh, it's a little bit of an assemblage but it's, it's not hard to do. Um, and you get a real good bang for your buck. <laughs> um, but I want to make sure that I give her credit for that because this is her design. And I'm just going to show you how to how you can make it today. Okay, so first I'm going to do the clean and simple card with you. And this uses uh, a Tim Holtz stamp set. And I forgot to bring it up here with me. It's called Christmas Time and it includes this stamp plus this Merry Christmas script. So we got some berries, we got some poinsettia, and we got some starbursts. It's a really versatile set. I really like it a lot. I've used it a lot. So um, let's make one of these cards real quick. And I'll show you how fast it is. So you want to start out with a 5x7 card. I'm using white. Now you can cut your own uh, by making it 10 by 7 and then score it in the middle, but I happen to have <coughs> a set of white cards that are 5 by 7. So if you can find these on sale someplace or with a coupon, then you know you cut out a little bit of work and it's already done for you. So this is 5 by 7. Then the next thing you need to do is cut a piece of red, and I thought I cut an extra piece of red, but maybe I didn't. Um, so let me get my red card stock here and one of my cutters and once you cut the next one I've got the dimensions written down so this red card stock will be at six and three-fourths by four and three-fourths so let me cut that here we go okay so let's go with six and three-fourths and turn it around and go four and three-fourths and I think you can get two out of an eight by ten sheet of cardstock okay and then I need a piece of white cardstock I did cut that one by six and three-eighths and four and a quarter and I'll also add these dimensions to the description so um, now we have our our pieces now let's go ahead and stamp so I'm going to I've got this uh, stamp on a, a large block and I, the ink I'm using is Jenny Boland's cough syrup by Ranger you could use any red that you want to use or any other color that you want to use. You can make this your own. This is my uh, design using Tim Holtz's stamps. Feel free to use it and modify it with however you want to with any color and arrangement that you want to. Okay, so I've inked that. Put my white cardstock down here. And I want to get him offset. Let's see, let me do this so that you can see. I want to do this offset and as close to the top as possible, close to these two edges right here as possible. And press it down to make sure that you get all of the image because these dark parts right here you really want to make sure you get. It's a sketchy uh, looking design so you <clears throat> it's going to be that way but you want to make sure that you utilize all of the inks that's on your stamp then 
I'm taking archivers I'm sorry archival <laughs> jet black ink and I'm inking my script sentiment with that and I'm going to set that right here at the bottom okay then so easy we're almost finished that was the hard part then we're going to put adhesive on the white card stock center it on your red piece of red card stock put your adhesive on the red Oops, upside down and make sure that you're putting this in the proper way and then center it on your white cardstock and voila you're finished a nice um, card you can add some bling to this if you like um, an embellishment if you like but you don't have to because this makes a really nice card just by itself and then you can put some sentiments on the inside so that's quick and easy and um, one thing I want to mention too if you're making your own Christmas cards you don't have to make a lot so you might want to do this assembly line fashion what I like to do is get all of my card bases and then I like to cut all of my, my red card stock my white card stock and then I'll do all of my stamping all at once and then I'll put them together so it makes it a lot quicker so that's that one that's my clean and simple card for you today I'm going to move these things out of the way. And now we're going to get to Tammy's card. And this one uses the Toy Soldier die. And what I did, I wanted, knew that I was going to make about 10 of these cards. Okay, so last night what I did was I cut out enough uh, soldier pieces, 10 soldier pieces from this die. You have, it comes in a lot of pieces. We have his body here, his um, uniform shirt, the gauntlets, the plume for his helmet, um, the cross on his front, and his boots. So what I did is I cut out all of these little pieces. Let me get this die out of the way for a second. Usually uh, what I want to do too when I'm making a lot of different things that have some die cuts is I will cut everything out all at once, put the pieces in baggies and then go assemble them all at the same time. So here's all of our various pieces. Get them all out for you. And let's see, I still need a helmet and a plume. There's one. Okay. And these are out of grunge paper, which cuts really nicely with these steel rule dies. Oops. Let me put all these back in. And I do use the assembly line way of doing things for this. Um, you need some craft card stock and what I did is I cut mine out and then I uh, roughed up all of the edges all at once with uh, my little paper distress tool so I have all of those done and then I took let's see the background paper is craft core stock which is um, a dark green craft core and I cut all of those out and then I rough their edges and well before I rough their edges I used my uh, music embossing folder and I embossed that craft cardstock and then I sanded that cardstock so here's what it looks like when it comes out of the embossing folder and then all I did was take a sanding disc 
and rub over the raised part. You can get some of the edges as well if you want. And a lot of dust doing that. And then I also took my distress paper tool and distressed the edges, all four edges. And if it tears a little bit while you're doing that, all the better. Let's do that. If it, if it bends over, tears, whatever, it adds to it. Actually, you might want to tear it on purpose a little bit. And one more side. Okay. So I got all that piece, all of those pieces ready. And then I cut out the tattered banner. I cut them all out at once so that you have that ready to go. And what I'm going to do with this banner is I'm going to ink it with walnut stain. And I would get everything cut out and then I go back and start adding the colors and all of the details to the pieces before I put them together. And then I have some small stick stamps, vintage lowercase stamps. Um, I don't know who they were by. I've forgotten who they're by. Oh, here we go. Uh, stamp abilities, wood stamps. And I'm taking the archival ink. And I start at the end so that I know I have enough room and I'm going to stamp a uh, Pahrumpa Pum Pum on it and I just go backwards and do this stamping and now there's a word so then I need to put another space in between and my P And then I need another space and find my A. Is that my A? <laughs> nope, it was my P. There's my A. And then another word. And I would do all, I would ink and stamp every one of the banners all at once so that I don't have to stop in my assembly and do, see, the secret of it is, is to do each process all at one time so that you don't have to keep changing processes. So there's my sentiment, and I also would take a, um, a Sharpie and put the dashes in with my sharpie. I don't have a a dash stamp but it's just as easy to put the dashes in with your sharpie. Okay. So then the, now the banner is ready. Okay. So then we have to come and and uh, work on the soldier. And here is the soldier all put together and I used fired brick stain for his hat and his uniform so you're just gonna put that directly on your grunge board grunge paper soldier and I'm also going to put it on his uniform hands are going to get yucky and inky doing this but you can also use tweezers to hold it hold it still 
especially with this, these the really small pieces. Okay, so there's that part. And we also want to do his helmet. And um, I did put two coats of each of these stains on because I wanted to make sure that they were kind of dark. Okay, so there's the fired brick. I used um, the antique bronze stain. And it's metallic stain, so we have to shake it. I used that. Well, actually, you know, I forgot to do something. I forgot to uh, put this bronze right here on this chest area. And I can still do that, thankfully. Because this part of his uniform shows through and then that's a little metallic look and I'll probably have to come back and put another coat of that on after the red stain dries completely so that we just get the copper instead and then I also put it on the plume so and I'm gonna have to hold this down okay so we've got that part done I used tea dye stain for his face. Let me get some of this stain wiped up. Okay. Alright, that was easy. I used black soot for his boots. Again, you want to put uh, two coats on this, on his boots especially. So you want them to be really dark. So I just put the one coat on and it acts as a base coat. And as soon as it dries, let me dry it off, dry it real fast. And I'll come back and put another coat on. And you can just keep doing that until you get the depth of color that you want. Okay, so I'm going to pull that out of the way. And then it, I think it's a good idea too to come down here on the soldier's body and put your black on the boot area as well. Um, you can also and should probably do the edges. Dropped it. And you can do the edges on the, uh, the uniform and, and things too. Okay, so we've got that. Now I really want to make sure that I clean up my craft sheet. Because I don't want the black soot to get involved where the white is. Now I got a little black on there, but that's okay because this is going to cover it up. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. And now I'm going to come in with the gauntlet and the crossbars. And I'm also going to put it right here where his pants are. But I'm going to let that dry off for just a second. And let me move these out of the way. So I'm using white picket fence, which I also need to shake. Use my little tweezers to hold pieces down. Well, I dab that on. You could also use paint dabber if you prefer. But I kind of like the look of the stain. It, I think it gives a little more vintage look. 
and on these you also would want to, to do two coats see if I can dry them off without blowing them away because you see that first coat just sinks into the grunge paper whoops do that a lot <laughs> I find it works better for me to just kinda use the the tweezer edge to pin down the this little piece that I'm staining rather than to hold it in there because you have to get such a, a small hold that I end up knocking it out of the tweezers and having to start over so this works better for me okay so that's how we do that these out of the way and then I'm going to come in and do my soldier's pants go right straight across there doesn't matter if you get up here in the red because that's part's going to be covered then when it's all dry I'm going to clean up my mess spraying uh, simple green on there wonderful stuff gets paint off your painting when you make a mistake cleans up your craft sheet cleans your hands it's great stuff okay so then when this is all dry then we'll put it together and I used uh, some some of it that I used the tape on the larger pieces so let's put this on him it's got a little adhesive sticking out do it right side up the uniform I just uh, adhered to him straight to the soldier the let me see and also the crossbars it's not quite dry yet so I'm, I'm gonna wait on that because it's not quite dry yet uh, so let's go to the helmet and I'll for the helmet and some of the other pieces I used a uh, studio mat but you can use uh, any quick dry glue but you want to make sure that it is a quick dry because you want it to adhere uh, very quickly so I'm putting the plume on the top of his helmet I'm sorry I know my hands are in the way okay and then Then I'm using some pop dots and pop dot material. And let's see, my scissors are here. Yeah, you know, you can use the uh, leftovers from your pop dots. It's the same as you can the dots. So I'm going to put some of that on the back of my helmet. Whoop. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to work with things that aren't dry. <laughs> it's a little hard so I'll pop that helmet right there on top onto the base let me put a little more glue back on here because it came off that's why you want a quick dry glue quick set glue okay Get that there now this card you might not want